Okay, um, in this section, we're going to be animating the text which appears underneath the logo. So in the previous tutorial, we just finished creating this. And now we just need to do a simple reveal animation. And uh, we're going to be building this using Cinema 4D's MoGraph tools. So this right here at the end, it kind of comes in from the left side. And uh, the letters are rotating in and then going to the final position. This is the scene in C4D. I'm just going to clean up some things here before we start the animation. I'm gonna get a null object and I'm gonna call this lighting and I'm just going to drop all of the lights and the background and the sky object. Just drop all of this into this null and I'm going to switch them off in the preview just so our workspace is a little bit less cluttered and less distracting. I am still working using the layer colors, just because perhaps it's a little easier to look at than the, the red texture and the fire overlay on top, which looks like this before you, you hit render. It's kind of crazy to look at. So I like to just uh, stay in the layer color whilst I am working. Let me also just name everything uh, correctly. So this is the text and this is the logo. And I'm just going to order these correctly. And uh, we can even create a layer for the backup folder here. So if we create a layer in the layer manager over here, just double click, we can drop this in here and then hide it using this switch right here. Before we start animating this, we need to make sure that all the letters are separated and they act as individual pieces. And the way we're going to do this is using the fracture object, which is found in MoGraph and fracture. And just as the name suggests, this is going to break apart these letters. With the mode set to explode segments and connect, you're not going to see any visual feedback as you change these uh, settings over here. But what's happening is this explode segments and connect mode, it's breaking up this line of text based on the fact that these letters do not intersect with each other. So now each letter is going to be separated from the rest. And just to show this is working, we can go to MoGraph and Effector and get something like the random effector. And there you see the letters are now moving around freely from each other. I'm gonna remove this because uh, we wanna use a different effector. And I'm also going to solo the text by itself. Let's go to MoGraph and Effector and let's get the plane effector. I'm gonna switch off the position for now. What I wanna play with first is the rotation. And here we have the heading which is basically sort of left to right. This is what we're going to be animating on. And we also have the pitch and the banking, but uh, we're not going to be using these particular case. Anyway, let's set the heading to negative 90. So minus nine zero. And we want to go to the fall off tab and set the shape to linear and change the orientation to minus X. And now when I start to move the effector from left to right, the letters are going to unroll based on the fall off, which is indicated by the yellow square and the red square and uh, the other yellow square. The influence of the effector is at 100% where the red square is, which is why any letters which are on this side of the square are fully rotated. And then from the red square to the yellow square on the left, this is where there is a fall off from 100% influence to 0% influence, which is why when this passes through, the letters gradually go from being fully rotated to their final resting position. The settings which were used in the original animation were as follows. The offset was set to 100%. And this is going to look more fluid because the transition between one letter to the next is smaller. And uh, at any given point, lots of letters are moving at the same time until the last one comes to the final position. 
I'm gonna move this down to where the text is just because it makes sense to do that. Just quickly, I wanna go to the timeline and set the length to 13 seconds. And let's extend the area we are looking at by just dragging this bar to the right. My time units in this little box uh, are indicated by seconds and then this section is indicated by the frame number. But I believe by default this is going to be set to frames as well. So if you want to change that, go to Edit, Preferences, and in the Units section, you want to change your animation unit to SMPTE. And uh, this is the particular layout which I prefer. I have my frame numbers here seconds over here and then over here too and whilst i am dealing with frames and uh, and so on let me just press ctrl and d to bring up the project attributes and under fps in the project settings tab which is the the first one i'm going to set this to 24 and now we can start using some keyframes let's move the effector to just beyond the first letter and in the plane effector, I want to go to the coordinate tab and animate on the X position. So to set the first keyframe, I'm just going to hold control and click the circle next to PX. And this is going to be happening from halfway through the animation. So from about six seconds, let's move this keyframe to there. And the last keyframe is going to be all the way at the end. So at 13 seconds. Let's move this to when all of the text has been unrolled. So here. And we can click again by holding control on PX to set the final position. And this is going to be the animation you're going to see. Nothing special at the moment. It's quite slow, but uh, we can adjust the keyframes shortly. Let's just quickly dial in the other numbers before we adjust the keyframes. I'm going to enable the position in the parameter section. I wanna set the Y position to zero and set the Z position to minus 200. So the letters are gonna be rotating and also moving from the front here toward the center of the scene, just like this. And that's the same as the animation you see in the preview just like that. And all of this is being done by just two keyframes. If we go to window and timeline, we can see just what's happening. Let's twirl open the plane object and the position, position X, and uh, it's across on the right side. Let's uh, zoom out. And you can navigate this section just like you navigate in your viewfinder. So one, moves around and two zooms in left to right. Let's make this taller. I want to adjust the animation curve. Let's start with the first point. You can grab this and move it to the right to about nine seconds. So basically at the very beginning, this is going to fade in quite slowly and it's going to go faster in the middle section and then slow down at the end but uh, we need to slow this down even further i'm gonna pull this all the way back to be in line with eight seconds and that's my animation curve so when we play it back we see something like that and if this is not smooth enough for your liking you can add another effector called the delay effector and this will also act as a uh, sort of easy ease kind of effect if you go to the Effector tab under Strength, you can set this to something quite high, like maybe 80%. This will increase the interpolation on your letters and the way they animate across to the last letter coming to a rest is going to be a lot more smoother and gradual. So try that out and see what it does for you. Just make sure that in the Effectors section of the Fracture, this is put below the plane effector. It needs to operate after the plane effector for the effect to work. And uh, we can just unsolo everything. And that is the animation for our text. 
The logo actually stays in exactly the same place throughout the entire animation. It's only the cameras which animate around it and that's what we're going to be looking at in the next section.